Howdy, Facebook friends. It's uh, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today, we are going to take the bridge off the guitar. This off the jam of an instrument is a 1940 Martin triple, double O, excuse me, double O 18. It has a bridge on it. It's, an, it's a non-original bridge, I believe. And it has a crack right at the uh, saddle slot on the base, high, base side that um, so it needs to be replaced and so the first step is to remove the bridge. I have removed the strings and the bridge pins in the saddle and so now I'm going to proceed to uh, heat the bridge up and remove it completely. The first thing I do in that process is to take my super ancient cardboard call wrapped in foil. Very trusty and handy. I've used it for years and years. And it has a nice cutout that fits right around the bridge. And so it protects the finish around the bridge because to apply heat, I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use my handy dandy heat lamp. And I also have a little water bath here for my spatulas very thin and ground flat to a nice sharp smooth edge that will allow me to get under the bridge. I have heated that up here to uh, around 140 degrees so that um, that moist heat will also allow me to get right to that glue, glue line between the bridge and the top and uh, separate that glue joint with uh, as little alteration to both to the top as possible. And so uh, I actually already cheated a little bit and started on this little bit to make sure it was going to come off good. So I have taken the corner up already and preheated it. So I won't need to be heated for very long, but usually uh, this is what I do. I actually lay the lamp right on the bridge and do this for a couple of minutes. I'm trying to heat the whole thing, but specifically I am going to be starting to peel the bridge off from this base side. Um, in an effort to avoid the problem of which way the top grain is running, I'm going to go straight cross grain on this, 90 degrees to the grain at the top to start with, so that I can get right to that glue line. And uh, now that I've heated it a couple of minutes, I'm going to raise the lamp up so that it won't be such direct hot heat right on the bridge but allow it to penetrate a little bit and uh, I quite probably will reheat it through the process as I go through this and it cools off little by little but this would be the same procedure if uh, the, we were going to use this bridge and it were coming up a bit and we were uh, just needed to re-glue it um, because this bridge is not original I wonder what kind of glue it is that is used. I believe it is not high glue, which would have been used originally on the instrument. The high glue reacts much more to moisture than to heat, um, while the uh, slightly more modern aliphatic resin wood glue will react mostly to the heat, but the moisture also helps. So I'm going to pop my call off here. Take my curved spatula. This is a I believe an icing spatula. It might be a, an art spatula also, but what I want to be able to do is lie it on the top here. And as I said, I already did this procedure for slightly before, so it is sliding right under the bridge, and I can feel it softening the glue and going across there. And I'm trying to do this as carefully as possible so that I can work my way right across here. I'm also not holding my left hand up here for a particular reason, because when you get to the end, it can tend to pop off, and you make got to make sure so many, I need to have my hand down below the bridge. Learned that one the hard way, as you can see. Actually, that didn't come from that, but it's a good visual. So this spatula has a curve to it, and when I get to the end of that curve, I have to stop. Although, I like to go a little past that. I can feel it kind of, it has gone in as far as it can go, and it's starting to coming from this side also. That noise
noise is somewhat reminiscent of the aliphatic resin wood glue because it gets I mean it's not completely melted but it's starting to to melt it gets that squeaky noise this one is a little flatter not very long but it allows me to get in there just a little deeper and I'm going to heat I can feel it kind of that it's gone in about as far as it wants to so I'm going to put this back put my cardboard foil call on again grab my heat lamp and heat it a little bit more and I'm going to slowly work my way across the bridge to do this whole thing and uh it's going to take a few minutes here, so um, I am going to make a new bridge for this guitar so we can replace this um, crack, cracked bridge. And I have a nice chuck, chunk of really great Gaboon Ebony that the customer actually sent me to use for this bridge. Um, so that was nice to have. I can make a nice replica of a 1940 Martin Bridge. This is the part that is really exciting, where you sit patiently and wait for the heat to penetrate, while trying not to heat it up too much. careful here of the heat lamp so that neither of us touches it because it's very hot. All right, so let me go back to this guy and start working in this way again. One of the things that helps me here is I watch the spatula uh, through the bridge pin holes. Of course that allows me to see how far it's penetrating and I'm also looking the end of that spatula to see if there are any, um, if there's any wood grain on it. So right now it's pretty wood grain free and I can tell that I am right in that glue line. I come up this direction here too to try and free up this front edge a little bit. Again, for the people that are showing up, are joining us late. What uh, what are we working on? Today? It is a 1940 008 Martin 0018, huh? and we're removing the bridge because this one is cracked and it will not hold up properly over a long period of time. See that little move there? That one I was. Spatula was stuck and I pulled it out and it went bing. That's why I have to be very careful in my hands because I have ground this to a nice sharp edge that will allow me to penetrate that glue line. I've also polished it up so that when it sits on the finish here, it does not mar the finish either. It goes in and uh, yeah. I'm getting right across it here now. Got about, got it about halfway off here. If you have any questions, send them in. We'll gladly answer them if we can on the video, but most of the times after the video. Yep, certainly. Um, there are all kinds of ways that one could go about heating the bridge up and protecting the finish, and this is a fairly old school way, but it is the way I have learned and uh, continue to do because I'm so familiar with it, having done it quite a few times over the years. Now I'm just reheating it again. Trying, uh, I've taken off this first half up to about there, so I'm trying to make sure this heat it's a little harder for the heat to penetrate this center section of the bridge because it's quite a bit thicker. The heat will penetrate these wings fairly easily. Um, and that's of course why I started on a wing there to, because it's the easiest spot to get the spatula started. I'm trying to get the rest of it 
heat it up here without too much heat. Just enough. How much is just enough? Well, you do it a little bit at a time, just like I'm doing, so that you can feel the spatula penetrate the glue line. I'm actually going to put that back in my water bath there. I probably need to turn my water bath on a little bit here. It's now dropped down to 120 degrees, and I like it to be around 140. So I monitored that too. There it is. It just kicked in there. stay on for a couple of oh, for a minute or so here. Please come to the cell floor. The floor is the cell floor. And the whole back edge off here in the middle, which is a nice thing. Go from over here again, see what's happening to the front edge. It's getting a little stubborn over here. here until just not to jinx it here so one of those big surprises doesn't happen in the middle of this but once I mean the main thing that I'm trying to do is to take this up very clean meaning take take it off at that glue joint with no with as little wood um, coming up on the bridge itself too I want to minimize any wood on the bridge so, trying to make sure that I make a, a remove it, the whole thing, or any wood fibers that might be attached to the bridge, so that I don't. That's the main thing. You could um, quite possibly not get to the glue line and be forcing the spatula into the softer top wood, which would be a bad thing. In this case, I do have, oh boy, not only was there a crack here, but I see right now glue heated up and seeped out of a crack that was running along the bridge pins right there, and another crack that was right there. So this bridge was definitely fragile and um, Although I was able to put string tension on before I pulled it up, so the crack was reasonably solid, but there were major concerns about how long that was going to last. And uh, I had to agree with those concerns. So now we have there, we are most of the way off here, which is nice. You can see the bolt pretty much off there, but it's still pretty tenacious over here in this last bit. And this is where I have to be even more careful because I could very easily grab that and pop it right off there the whole way, but I have to make sure nothing comes with it when I do. All right. So when I first penetrated over here, you can see that I didn't get right to the glue line. There's a little bit of wood there from the bridge, but because I'm not reusing this bridge, that is okay. And we have a fairly clean surface here. Notice the cross hatching scratched into the. That is something that some folks do to allow the glue to bite in. Oh, well, that's that's. But that's another sign that this was not an original Martin bridge because it's not what Martin does. But anyhow, I will peel up that little uh, last bit of uh, ebony and. Uh, Fashion myself a new bridge, and hopefully we will be able to see that part of it too here. One of the more crucial parts of the, uh, that one's gonna have to go to voicemail, uh, crucial parts of the uh, bridge re-glue or gluing the new bridge is fitting the bottom of that bridge to this somewhat uneven surface. I will sand and smooth this up quite nicely. And uh, because of string tension, most tops. Jesse, your sandwich is at the door. Jesse, your sandwich. 
sandwiches at the door. The top tends to do this a little bit, where from string tension, tends to be pulled this way. That's an exaggerated move, but the behind the bridge tends to belly up like this. You sometimes have a corresponding sink in the front of the bridge. Um, so when I fit the bridge, it's not a, a, a it's certainly not a flat surface, nor even a, a nicely domed surface. It has multiple things going on there. So when I re-glue the bridge, I'm trying to carve the bottom of the bridge to fit the exact shape of the top with no pressure or tension so that when I glue it on, it will have the best opportunity to stay on because it's under a lot of tension from the strings. And that surface, you know, the, the better I can get that uh, total wood-to-wood -wood surface area all the way out to the edge, the better off I am for the bridge reclo. Was there a reason why you didn't start with the um, travel sign? Um, it's just a matter of preference? A matter of preference, I believe, yeah. Um, it may be, and that preference may have uh, come from uh, many times when you have to re-glue a bridge, the first, the first area that comes up is one of the bridge wings, these corners. And of course, many times it's the base side just because of the higher string tension on that side. So it may be, it could be also be just uh, a fact where this is always how I've always positioned myself on my bridge with, or my bench, me facing here, peg head down there, body down there. The base side is closest to me. It could, it, but I believe it's, um, because of course, I can easily flip it around and work from the other way, but I usually work from this direction. And, you should always go one, one direction, or could you meet at the middle? You can meet at the middle. As you saw, I started here at cross grain, and I started to work this side in, and then I had to make sure the front edge was coming off. Um, ideally, a guitar top, when it is cut from a single piece of wood, is split down the middle, and those two wood, pieces of wood are laid open like this. That's called book match. So that they're both tr from treble to bass, it's a very uniform um, piece of wood. and. Um, so there is, you know, all the grain running in this direction that we see here. But there is also a side grain here to the tree, um, to the piece of wood and to the tree. Ideally, the top wood is cut from a tree that is completely straight. Let's say that the piece of top wood is cut out of the tree from this direction. So the grain in this direction, we would see here, is running straight up. In reality, it's very difficult to know exactly what's going on inside a tree when you cut it down. And almost all the time, there is some slight run out to the piece of top wood, which means in an extreme case, instead of a grain line running like this, it would be like this. So you would see it. And so when you book, when you open that up to the book match, if you have a lot of run out, that grain running in this direction, the light can penetrate into that grain in, two, in different ways. So you will see, some guitars you will see where you look at it from this direction and you see the top a little bit lighter on this half and darker on this half. And when you flip it around this way, you see the opposite. That's a sign that there's a fair amount of run out in the top. And because that grain is running in this direction, if I take my spatula, stick it in here, there's always the possibility that I can dig into that grain instead of going right into that glue line all the way through here. Here, come check that out. There is a, there, there, there's the direction of the grain right there. See those couple little slivers right there? I, I wouldn't do that. I don't do that in this direction. They go off the spatula. But you can see there, right there, very small amount of, of run out in that area. You know, so that's the danger of taking the spatula parallel with the grain one way or the other. You have to be aware of that run out. And um, you can see that by looking at the light and usually um, it's best to go into the light rather um, so that if you're, you're looking at it from that direction this side is dark, chances are I'm going to hit that like this. This top has very little um, side to side change in color so there's very little um, uh, run out in this top and that in an extreme case it can make the top uh, not as strong especially at that glue joint because if there is an angle running in this way and the bridge is being pulled like this from string tension, you can, and when that, usually when a bridge comes up, the back edge comes up first, and so you get this kind of an action. And if you have run out in that way, that 
tension right there can go right into the wood grain and pull top wood with it. So I've certainly seen that before where a bridge comes up, a bridge failure in an extreme case where um, maybe it popped all at once or it happened over time and it wasn't noticed. The guitar was sitting in the case under string tension for a long period. Um, it got warm, so the first part of that glue joint started to come loose from, uh, from heat. And then once it hit that grain run out, it popped forward. And then, you know, I've seen tops completely damaged and have to be replaced because of that run out situation too. Yeah, I've also had tops where I've re-glued the bridge and uh, one thing that I can do with this tiny little bit of grain pull up right there, I'll glue that down here in the process. I'll actually yeah, squeeze yeah, some glue under there and clamp that down and let yes. that dry while I'm working on the bridge. And I've done that before where there was a fairly extreme amount of run out, glued that back down, glued the bridge back on and a short period later anywhere from a you know, three months to a year, the same thing happens because the top can't handle that. Because of the run out, the top can't handle the, the string tension and the bridge bridges will not stay glued down. So um, do you cradle the net back head when exerting that amount of force? When I'm doing this, I use, as you as you saw, I needed the guitar to be fairly free of any um, at least the way I do it, because I like to be able to move move the guitar around and move from one side to the other. Um, I guess, and I didn't feel like I was putting a lot of tension on the peg head just because I'm working in this direction here. So you could have a, a neck rest under here, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, some of the guys in the shop have a guitar crater where the body would be held so that they can work around it. I prefer to, to uh, let it sit pretty free on the, on the top so I can manipulate it how I need to. And again, it's just from a, from a uh, personal preference, you know, how I learned to work. And I think we're all done. Uh, thanks for joining us in the shop today. Be sure to uh, share this on Facebook and like us. And uh, if you have any questions, please fire away and we'll, we'll get them answered here uh, shortly. Thanks again. So long. Thanks.